You're watching Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god. I can't even deal with the fact that that happened and is the beginning to this video, but it gives you some indication of the exciting week that I have had. I have had the busiest stagey week of my life. If you're meeting me for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe. I'm obsessed with all things theatre and this is my stagey YouTube channel. This is week six of a new series that I've been doing called Oh My God Hey, where you get to follow me around on my stagey adventures and see what shows I'm seeing before the reviews get posted here. I'm not gonna waste too much more of your time because as you may be able to tell, this is a very long episode. This is five exciting days back to back, some press nights, some uh, just going to see shows because we've got tickets, uh, some press events, um, lots of very exciting things. Um, and you get to come with us. So check out the stagey adventures we had this week. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you're subscribed to my stagey YouTube channel. Oh my God, hey! Oh. Welcome back to another thrilling theatrical week. We have journeyed into the nation's capital to, to conduct some early morning business. It's very early. We are living Not the commuter early. life. It's very early for us. Yes. It's very early for stagey people because this yes. is this is like the actual morning. It's so crisp. Mm. London is full of busy walking people and we've just been on a, a busy commuter train uh, to come into London to go to a very exciting press launch of a very mysterious and secret thing featuring Surian McKellen. And if you're wondering why the hat and the coat and the scarf, it's because... He lives calm in San Diego. It is not, no. It's because this morning, press launch with Surian McKellen, mystery show in the outdoors. This evening, Moulin Rouge Can Can Seats, uh, which we're very excited about. But how the hell do you dress for both without going home in the interim, which I'm not doing. So this, as it turns out, is the answer. The answer, as it so often is, is hat. So that is the justification for today. So I feel like journalisty. I feel excited. I'm gonna go and gonna go and find out some exclusive press news and hopefully I'll be able to share a snippet with you as well, I'm thinking. So that's exciting. So hopefully you're now coming with us to a very exciting, very exclusive press launch. Let's go find out what it's about. Okay, we're There's here. An egg. There's an egg. There's an egg there and there is a press caucus that you can see behind me. All of the exciting news outlets are here for this egg and there is a door in the front of the egg. There's a man guarding. I'll show you in a second because I'm just zooming on my face. There's a man guarding the door. It's all very Edna Turnblad, circa You Can't Stop the Beat. Is Ian McKellen going to walk out of this egg? I'm hoping so. I can only assume so at this point. I'm going to show you the egg. Excuse me. Egg. Egg. Egg door. Look at the egg. Isn't it excellent? I'd like to tell you about a little show that I'm involved in. It's going to be so much fun. It's a pantomime called Mother Goose, which features obviously an enormous egg. I've got to lay one of these eight times a weekend. Just think of me. Think, think of the pelvic floor muscles after me. All of you. As one, turn your backs, guys. Let's start. Let's make a Mexican wave of back turning. And the journos and the photographers. Right, I'd like to look down. Everybody, come on, let's have a. the marvellous Jimmy Carr. <laughs> so please. <laughs> Gentlemen, will you, will you, will you step out, please? Ian McKellen, everybody. John Bishop, everybody. Hello, hello. So I'm a, I'm a the goose, you're my goose. I'm the goose. But what do you do? I don't do I'm sorry. your love interest. Oh. <laughs> That's what I am. I'm the eye candy. Well, <laughs> I am. I am poor goose. So we're married, and what happens is we're poor, and so we have a wish to get money out of nowhere. 
and so then we get a goose that lays golden eggs and makes us rich. No, and no, this no, is no, not, no, 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 this is very important because today is the Tory party conference and Quasi Quartang has also prayed for a goose to come to lay golden eggs because apparently that's their economic policy. Yes. <laughs> Of course, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry. Come on, Ian. At the top. Know that story, Peter Pan, the boy who never grew up? And funnily enough, the first production ever of that as a play was at the Duke of York's Theatre, which is just across the road, where we are going to be doing his pantomime. Come on. Um, Peter Pan. And I, my mum explained to me the story, and you know, one of the things that happens is that uh, there's a real, there's a crocodile on stage, and he, he, he eats Captain Hook, the villain of the piece, uh, and, and Peter Pan, of course, flies, and so did the children he, go, uh, he goes with to Never, Neverland. No, they weren't really flying. I could see they, they were on wires. <laughs> I was three. <laughs> He's already a critic. <laughs> Absolutely. <Wow. laughs> no one else in the world. It, or it belongs to us, and uh, maybe that's why we feel rather special when we go and feel that. Yeah. Oh, we've got a secret that nobody else got. Yeah. Pantomime. Um, it's been really, really wonderful having you all in this room and all <coughs> outside of Leicester Square. Thank you so much for coming along, and helping us hatch our amazing, our amazing show. Um, anything else anyone wants to say? Ian, Harv, John, the cast. Come on, cast. Anyone want to say anything? We're really excited! Yay! Yay! <laughs> that says it all. It says it all. No, thank you for coming. Thank you for asking some great questions. And we'll see you over the Christmas period and beyond. How are we feeling? What's the, what's the mood of the day? How excited are we? Very extremely excited. It's so lovely to meet most of us as well um, on this day. Yeah. Slightly overwhelming. Nervous. Well, it's nervous. Yeah. Obviously. Um, but it's it's been a great day so far. I'm excited to be here. How are you feeling about your first panto? I, I won't lie. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like I guess obviously it's going to be a lot of like comedy and being silly and stuff and yeah. always. Being used to always having to be serious, it's going to be oh, breaking the fourth wall, yes, baby. Yes, you know what I mean? Oh, it's yes. just so yeah. I'm excited about though. Absolutely, always play upstage, right. play, do more, do more. The McKellen of it all must be exactly. very exciting. Um, I'm assuming no one has worked with Ian McKellen before. Has anyone? No, like, no, I only what? <laughs> do you know what my favourite? I know he's done like amazing, amazing work, but I during lockdown binged all of the Graham Norton clips that, that he's done and oh, I absolutely yeah. love that. No, I know. I can't. We're also joined, of course, by the wonderful Oscar Conlon Murray, who is Hi, darling. <laughs> taking it upon himself to, to staff the event. What do you want in? Egg and chips? <laughs> Sausage bat? <laughs> Five minutes out of Only Falls, it all comes flooding back. It all comes flooding back. <laughs> all coming back to me now. How are we? Are we well? Good, we're having a lovely day. Me too, isn't it so lovely? I'm working with Gandalf. You are? <laughs> and he also played Magneto. <laughs> Do you know what? We were talking about this the other day. I have. We were talking about who, what your first theatre trip was. And mine, when I was five, was to go and see a production of The Tempest at the West Yorkshire Playhouse. I grew up in Doncaster. And Ian McKellen was playing Prospero. So that was the first show I ever saw, was Ian McKellen. And I'm about to be on stage with him. That's a great McKellen story. Have you had the chance to tell him that yet? I haven't. I'm a bit scared. Every time I see him, I just kind of bow and curse at the same time. It's like a dying swan. Is it Ian or Syrian? Syrian, naturally. Syrian, Syrian, yeah. Syrian. Night of the Realm, Syrian. CBE, Syrian, Lord Syrian, of Syrian. all things. But how exciting! And you know, you mentioned Only Force to go from something so different mm. into this, and it, it's it kind of articulates and and makes clear how magical theatre is for me because it's total escapism and going from one thing to another not knowing who you are five minutes ago i was in only fools and now i'm going to be playing jack in mother goose and it's just all very very special those worlds collided on thursday when i wasn't told 
but I had the offer through for this for Mother Goose. If anyone's seen the show, the stage is in darkness and all the lights go over the audience. And so as the curtain went up, the first face that I saw on the third row was Surrey and McKellen. Oh my gosh. And I just lost it. Is there any part of you that thought maybe he's here to give final approval? That's exactly why he was there. <laughs> exactly why he was there. And luckily he did. So here I am. And I'm very, very excited to begin. He's got a huge heart and he ultimately falls in love with Jill, played by the effervescent Simi. Oh, effervescent! <laughs> what a review. I'll take that. <laughs> That's going on spotlight. <laughs> Asterisk. So you may think this yeah. is all quite exciting. I need to illustrate to you the disparity of what's going on here. Out there we have a fancy press area with fancy press and there's a nice skylight and there's a fire pit in the middle where they're talking to the fancy cast members. We are here filming in the kitchen. We are in the kitchen of the event, but as always, just happy to be here and having a lovely time, having a lovely day. I may go have another free orange juice. Uh, but it's it's about a family down on their luck who come into some money and that in the present climate can feel like a very universal thing so I, I'm not too worried about that but I think it's just really exciting that we aren't just playing in London listen I'm not stupid if, if they'd offered me the gig and it was just in London I still would have said yes <laughs> but the fact that we are taking it on I live in Liverpool so to be able to be able to take my mum on the bus to see this rather than get her on a train to go to London is, is great for me I have a question. So when you're writing something like a pantomime, which is obviously there are going to be moments that are a springboard for other things to happen and for, dare I say, improvisational yeah. moments um, and unruly actors and stuff like that, how much of it, when you're writing it, are you thinking, this is, I've written the entirety of this scene and I am in, completely in control of this comedy moment, and how often are you thinking, this is where it could kind of release to something else? I think with some scenes I sort of know this will work and I need to write it properly. With other scenes, like say there's a scene when they're making, they're, it's set in, in an animal sanctuary, so they're making food for the animals, which becomes a slosh scene where they're sort of messing around with food. I know that we're going to play around with that in rehearsal, so I've not spent too much time finessing that. So it's, it's a, bit, a bit of both really, but I'm really hoping with the sort of people we've got that once we're in the rehearsal room, we'll look at every scene and go, right, how do we make this funnier? How do we make this dafter? Where are you going to improvise? What are you going to say? Mm. So we sort of have a picture of what's going on. But yeah, hope, hopefully there's room for both. Yeah. Amazing, thank you. Oh my God, hey! Four and a half hours later. No. <laughs> thank you. The boat's involved. Is that the Uber boat? That is the Uber boat. We are walking across the Thames. We are heading to the National Theatre to go and get some work done. I'm going to do some video editing. Um, Aaron's going to do my worky worky stuff. some of his worky worky stuff. Um, we just had an amazing little um, opportunity to meet and chat with the cast of Mother Goose, uh, the pantomime that's going to be playing over Christmas at the Duke of York's Theatre in London, going to be touring around the UK. I made Serian McKellen say, oh my god, hey. I don't know if that's like a moment of pride or deep, deep shame that I've like debased one of the great actors of our time. Um, to I to sit next to him and get a photo. You did, him. you got a photo with him. I, I couldn't even begin to, to ask to have a photo with him. I was happy just to take yours, but um, an amazing morning. So really exciting to get to do those kinds of opportunities. Excited for the rest of the day. <sighs> Afternoon of work done. I have edited and exported a video that by the time you see this, you will have hopefully already seen on my channel. Um, I went and did a little bit of shopping in the National Theatre gift shop. That was fun. Bought a couple of plays that I've enjoyed this year. Bought play scripts of I, Joan and Jitney. Um, and I bought a new card holder. I'm going to show you. Because my old National Theatre card holder, this one, is starting to break. So I have a new one in this sort of a teal colour. So that's nice. And uh, we got some lunch as well. But I am... I'm, I'm now looking at the street food we're passing and I'm like, maybe I'm hungry again. Um, although we had some nice food. I like the food they do at the National Theatre Cafe, especially the chocolate and raspberry cookie. That was an adventure. That was a great time. But yes, nice little working space at the National Theatre, yes. if you didn't know about it. Got a lot done. Productive afternoon. Mm -hmm. There we go. We're now walking around for a little bit, killing time, before we head over to the Moulin Rouge. Yeah. Aha! Aha! We have just had donut time, because we love a donut time. And also, they're all over Theatreland. So we just went to the one on Shaftesbury Avenue, House Central. 
and now I can't find the Piccadilly Theatre. Where is it? Is it here? Back to the windmill. Am I here? Everybody loves the windmill. Throwback to Mrs. Henderson presents the musical. Ooh, we're, we've arrived in this incredibly picturesque location, um, but it's okay because I'm wearing a nice Sorry. hat. If anyone wants to know where my hat is from, by the way, I bought it at a hat shop in Swanage. That doesn't super help you, but if you've been watching my vlogs for upwards of like five years, then I bought it on camera. Fun yes. fact. So here, there's a secret cinema underground in that oh. um, hotel. Oh, that's, that's where, where do, this is. That's where they do film screenings. Look how pretty behind us. Oh my gosh. Lights on the floor. Very so fancy. Cute. Oh! We found the Piccadilly Theatre. How fortuitous. Here it is. I'm going to show you the marquee because it is probably the best marquee, I think, I agree. on offer in London right now. What they did to take off the... They used to have the LED screen that they used to project on. It's so yeah. much better without it. Yeah. And then it was scaffolding for ages, but... It's just stunning. Here we go. Let's cross this road without death. And you can see behind me, coming into view, there she is, Moulin Rouge. Let me give you a better look. So the windmill at the bottom of the information bar. Look at that, functional windmill. And what happens is that actually provides the power for the entire show. It's incredibly sustainable. Obviously, I'm joking. Look at that, aesthetic. I mean, this is the selfie spot, isn't it? This is the photo spot. Next to us, people are having their pictures taken. They know exactly what's up. Truth, beauty, freedom, love, Instagram. Okay, we're here, we're in the Can Can seats. We've just had a briefing to keep our chairs far forwards because it's going to close in behind us. You can see the entire auditorium. We're very close. They're underneath the performers. Yeah, yeah, we are, we are. That's behind us. Up there. And I'm just going to show you what we're seeing on the stage right now. <laughs> it is very close. We are very close. This is our view for the Moulin Rouge. Holy God. I'm excited. I mean, normally at this point in the show, I clean my glasses with a lens wipe. Do I need my glasses today? I'm short sighted, so this should be fine. I mean, it's close, and there's been further forward than the actual sign up. Okay. I will tell you in more detail later what these seats are like, but we are overwhelmed and we have found the one thing we needed, which was a bottle of wine. I can't say no to a bottle of wine. I have a table. I have a table right here for my wine. A little private table. Oh, more dry ice. Uh, we were attacked by dry ice. Yeah, end of that one, you can't see. <laughs> but the... you can see, but like, atmospheric lighting. Nobody else will ever see from this. Right. Elephant dry ice medley, but it's incredible here. I can tell you just like the detail on all these costumes and all the, the sets, and somehow I felt like I could see really far into the wings. I see very few spoilers, even if I look for them. You can't I, can't, see anything. I can't see spoilers. Also, I totally forgot because when um, Strilly Ballroom was on, I got to do a thing on the stage, and I completely forgot there is no wings. Tiny oh, wings. wings, tiny wings, but how amazing is this? This is the coolest. We're on the Elizabeth line. Look, it's the second of three trains that will get us to our theatrical destination today. Exciting. Could we have taken a more direct um, tube route? Possibly, but Elizabeth line. Elizabeth line. It's good vibes. Good vibes. Listen to how quiet it is. Can you hear how quiet it is? No, you can't. Exactly. Oh my god, hey! 
Today, we're at the Mercury Theatre in Colchester. Never been to this theatre before, never been to this place before, but it's there. We have spent most of our day there, I indoors. Just we're in a road. We are in a road. <laughs> yeah. We should probably not be in a road. Yeah. We're going to move to the pavement. We've spent most of our day so far inside the cafe area of the Mercury Theatre in Colchester doing some work. If you have seen my Cinderella video, you will appreciate why it has taken me all of today to film it, edit it on the train, finish editing it, export it here, upload it, make the thumbnail. That's all been happening this morning, if you are curious. Behind us is this fascinating landmark. Jumbo. It's a water tower? Yes. Yep, Victorian, Victorian water tower. If there's any Colchester natives or budding historians watching this video, you can tell us more about that perhaps in the comments section. But we got given a tour of the Mercury Theatre in Colchester. Uh, by one of their lovely staff members, Sam. So that was that was awesome. Yes. That was really cool uh, to get to go behind the scenes in a really exciting regional theatre, really fancy one. Yeah, they have so much capabilities, like a workshop, a massive rehearsal space. Like, it is really interesting what they can build. Yeah, amazing getting to see behind the scenes in a regional theatre. Um, I was laughing then because it really looked like that Royal Mail van was going to drive into the back of us and kill us. Um, but we are now off to go and have some food. I've spent most of the day just trying to get a fork with which to eat my salad. I've had the salad, I've uploaded my video, so I'm feeling very relieved on multiple fronts. Um, but we are here, I didn't even say, we're here to see the latest Mischief Theatre show, which is Good Luck Studio, which is premiering at the Mercury Theatre in Colchester, and I'm going to be reviewing it for What's On Stage. More about that later when I take you to this little pre-press night theatre trip. Press night's tomorrow, we're here a day early, because why not? Um, but first, can we go get some food? Here it is. Good luck, studio. I am back in my flat. We raced our way back uh, three trains from Colchester, narrowly avoided having to get a rail replacement bus, which is always a win, um, and had a, a good evening seeing Good Luck Studio. Always fun to go to a new venue, and the auditorium, I believe, uh, we found out when we were having a little tour of the venue, is a replica or is twinned with the auditorium of the Salisbury Playhouse, which um, I visited a lot while I was younger. So that was fun. That was novel. And the show was really interesting, which is not a word I readily associate with mischief shows. Um, but obviously I'll be reviewing it for what's on stage by the time this comes out. Uh, that will hopefully already be live on their website. So you can go and check out my thoughts on whatsonstage.com or on show score, the link for which is down below in the description. If you want to click on that, sign up for an account, you know the drill. But a very interesting Tuesday night at the theater. Tomorrow is a bumper stage day. So we are going to potentially order some late night McDonald's because we never did get the pre-show food earlier and then go to sleep and I will then go to work and I will join you again tomorrow for more Stageless. Oh my God, hey, we oh. are back in, yeah. <laughs> Do we go that way? Um, we the next one turn left, it's right here. It looked nice that way. Okay, we can. They had a cannon. Yeah, cannon. I have Wait, no idea if this is the right way. Why are we walking down the road? I think it was, was it a bicycle? No, it's a cannon. I'm telling you. We are meandering our way through London. If you couldn't tell, we don't super know where we're going, but we know where we are needing to end up, which is the Theatre Diner. Is it the Theatre Cafe no, Diner? it's the Theatre Cafe Diner. The Theatre Cafe Diner is where we are going this evening for an exciting preview of what they're going to be offering. So, very excited for that, because I am what? Hungry. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. It's nice to get to go to a food event, because, you know, we see theatre all the time. Five nights a week we're at theatre shows, and sometimes I just want to eat. I just yes. want to eat, so excited for that. Look, here's the cannon. I told you, I'm not crazy. We are going to continue navigating our way through, what's this, the financial district? Yes. It feels financial. It's like the start of the financial district. It's by Fleet Street, so that's all like press and media. Yeah, there you go. Fancy buildings. Honestly, I've been so consumed with just thinking about the food for this evening, I haven't even given any thought to the fact that like, there's performances, yeah, you have singing, singing, waiters. singing waiters, all this going on. What are you most excited for? Um, the decor, maybe, because like... Decor, good one, good answer. There's normally some like 
nice little references to shows and mm -hmm. things like that. Maybe seeing who else is there. I already know from the pictures that there's like things from shows of years past that like you thought were gone forever that are going to pop back up. I've seen the Shrek S. Yes. I'm excited for the Shrek S. I've worn green. There's a cat section. There's a cat section? Yeah. There's a cat section. Oh my gosh. This evening just changed. I'll be honest with you. I am all of this theatre themed stuff. You know, I love, I'm obsessed with it. I'm still most excited for dessert. Like, also pun titles. I'm gonna be very critical of the pun titles. Stay tuned for a review. We've already heard some of the pun <laughs> titles for food and I have, I have strongly mixed feelings. So stay tuned for my full thoughts on those. Maybe I'll do a review vlog. Maybe I'll do an entire just reviewing, reviewing the food at the Theatre Cafe Diner. If that's something you want, if I haven't already posted that content, let me know in the comments. I'm out of breath because I'm talking while pacing through the financial district because hungry. Here it is, we approach a glittering beacon of theatricality. It is the Theatre Cafe Diner. We are here. There's a sign and there's lights and there's people inside because it's open. This is very exciting. I'm gonna go inside. Look at this giant legally blonde sign. Have you noticed it's enormous? I have, I have. We have some legally blonde items around us as well. We have look at the dice bruiser. Okie dokie, we're here at the Theatre Cafe Diner. It's amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna do another video where I show you all of my footage from this because I can't use too much of this because they're playing musical theatre songs in the background and if The Greatest Showman gets me demonetized, I'm gonna be so very sad. Um, but we have our menus. We are waiting for a complimentary cocktail on arrival. Do you know what you're gonna have? I think I'm gonna have a show me the meaning of being loaded. You're gonna have show me the meaning of being loaded. I kind of want the whistle down the wings just because the pun is so good. I don't like a chicken wing usually. I'm a chicken tender person. But I like whistle down the wings as a pun so much I want to reward it with my custom. Clap. 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 Once again, back in London, we're in the same spot where we started the week, but this time we are not walking towards Ian McKellen's giant egg. No. We are going to the Wyndham's Theatre for Gala Night of Life of Pi. That's exciting. It's the new cast. It is the new cast. New cast have just joined. New Anne has taken over the role of Pi full time, who we saw last time when we saw the show, but then as an understudy, now playing the role as a principal, which is exciting. I was just going to say, I've worked with two people that are in this show. You have. There you go. I've seen two actors playing Pi before, and how many actors, is it seven actors who play the tiger? Yes. 
So I've seen somewhere between 7 and 14 actors play the tiger. Tonight, perhaps, up to 21. Ah, loud. Many tigers, many, many tigers. But we're very excited. Gala night in the West End. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever actually been to a gala night in the West End proper, in like a proper West End theatre. So this, this may be a first for me, but I love this show. Have. have I? Yeah, Pretty Woman. Oh yes! Oh, then I'm just lying. I'm just telling you nonsense, but... It's lying like a rook. Yes. We have just grabbed some chicken from Leon, and uh, mine was jerk chicken, and it was very hot, and now I desperately, desperately need a drink. So, there's that. But excited to see this show again, because mm -hmm. uh, this will probably be the last time we see it before it closes here in the West End, to Most head off likely. over to the Americas. Ah. One day it might tour, but who knows? Yeah, we were talking about this earlier. We were saying it's the kind of show, the kind of blockbuster play you'd expect to tour the UK. You know, it won the Olivier. Um, you were talking about all of this, but in its current configuration, probably not feasible to do so. So it will be interesting to watch its life and see where it goes next. Assumedly, it's going from its American debut, it's then going to go to Broadway. It feels the most natural. These cars are not happy. But also, I feel like for it to do a UK tour, they need to completely restage it, because there's no possible way you can tour this production right now. But they are NT-living it. They are NT-living it, so there's that to look forward to as well. I don't remember it having an interval the first time I saw it, but apparently yes. it does. Has it always had an interval? Yes. Did I just forget this? Maybe because yes. it's a shorter running time, I'm conflating that with it being a one act, because it's only two hours and five minutes, which is, that's an early night in the West End. Yeah, definitely an interval though. Definitely. Apparently there's always been an interval. Yes. Passing the Garrick. Because we visited your friends in interval. We did. See, this is what I was thinking. So, there you go. There you go. Look what's already outside the Garrick Theatre. Shout out to Rob Madge. My son's a queer, but what can you do? The answer is buy tickets. That's exactly what you can do. We're a little bit early. Aaron has gone to the toilet and the circle is empty. So I feel like we're going to mill around and find some things to do first before sitting down. Otherwise, we're going to be here for half an hour, slowly watching everyone else take their seats, which is not the vibe, but I will show you the set. So we are in row C of the Royal Circle, seats seven and eight. This is what the view looks like from those seats. I will say the circle feels incredibly close to the stage. It feels very intimate. Yeah. It does. Oh my god, hey! Hi! We are here this evening in Kingston, of all places, upon the Thames. It's there, I see it. Lovely bit of Thames. Uh, the view was much nicer earlier, but um, you didn't get here soon enough, so apologies. But we have just had a lovely dinner in Browns. Browns? Which is somewhere, I've only ever been to the Browns on St. Martin's Lane, uh, next to the Noel Coward Theatre, where Dear Evan Hansen is currently playing, unless you're watching this video in a few months, in which case it's not. Um, but lovely pre-theatre dining option for the Rose Theatre Kingston yes. because it is very nearby. We are walking over to the theatre now and we are here to see Caucasian Chalk Circle, Cheeky Bit of Brecht, Cheeky Bit of Brecht, starring <laughs> Carrie Hope Fletcher doing her first play, her play debut, her play -bue, if you will. I'm in a fun mood, how are you? Brechtian. You're Brechtian? <laughs> oh dear. We're already here. We are already here, that's how fast it was. Literally, I filmed this as we were leaving the restaurant. I had a lovely chicken schnitzel and a large glass of red wine because I've been at work today and it called for it. What did you have? I had a, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a nice dish with cod. You had a cod supreme. Yes, with which was like the most, excuse me, the most buttery mash. Was it supreme? It was all right. But what was great was the banoffee Mai Tai. The poster's behind us. I'm trying to... Hold on. We have to leave so it can adjust. There we go. Look at that. There she is. There she is. Oh, she looks angry. But it is the Caucasian chalk circle. She looks more surprised. She looks something. She's, she's certainly not expected to see whatever it is that she's seeing. But we're here at the Rose Theatre in Kingston. 
you've been here once before. I have. I came to see Zog. Zog. I've been here once before. I came to see six little-known show. Three letter shows. Yeah. Yeah. Shaking. Many more letters in today's title. Um, we're going to go inside. We're going to go get our tickets. Find out where we're sitting. Um, and get ready for a little bit of Brecht. A little bit of Friday night Brecht. Who doesn't like two and a half hours of Brecht on a Friday night at the end of a long work week? I have literally only ever seen the Threatening Opera at Pipe that's Brecht. So? So I'm intrigued to see what a range of Brecht is. We're going to find out, one way or another. And I'm apparently lots of songs. You. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you. Not Sorry. that one, but apparently lots of songs in this. So... There yeah. you go, because my sister studied this at GCSE, either drama or English, probably presumably drama. Mm. Um, but she was messaging me on WhatsApp earlier, she said, oh god, I had to go see that. Not enough songs for my liking, because this is what she always says to me when she sees a play. But ironically, this one has 20 songs from, from what I've heard, so excited. And it's, and it's contemporary. Yeah. So it's this weird thing where press night officially was last night, but a lot of critics are in tonight because there was a clash, because last night was also press night for the band's visit at the Donmar Warehouse. We obviously were at the Life, Life of Pi Gala, as you saw, which we loved, by the way. I don't think we've got the chance to tell you. Always love Life of Pi, loved New Anne in the role, loved all the new cast, just still beautiful, exceptional. And so cool to have the actual playwright three rows in front of us. Yes, Lita Chakrabarti was with her husband, the wonderfully talented Adrian Lester. Both of them were loving life in the front row mm. of the dress circle. That was very cool, uh, but we had a great time. But yes, so in any case, lots of critics here tonight to see the Caucasian Chalk Circle. So we're gonna go in and maybe we'll take you in with us. We'll see what we can film and maybe we'll see you later. Bye. Okie dokie, so we are in the interval. We have just had a 90 minute first act, which I am fine with, but it does mean everyone goes to the toilet. So that's happened. Uh, but we have our interval wine. Interval rosé, and to go with our rosé, we both got a rosé, and a pot of jazzles, a pot of interval jazzles, which is apparently what these are called. I love these. I love a theatrical pick and mix. They do them at the turbine. In few other venues have I seen pick and mix. Oh, I feel like I saw pick and mix the other day. Somewhere we were at the other day, I saw a pick and mix, but also at the Rose so Theatre Kingston. Pie. Maybe. But they had so many snacks. Mm. That's a great, a great really? snack selection. At the Rose Theatre Kingston, I will say. Jazzles. So jazzy. So we're going to have some wine and some jazzles in the second act. I'm not mad about that. Not mad at all. Oh my god, hey. So Hello. In the, in the midst of this very... I need to wait for you to do that. I don't know why I'm not prepared at this point. Hold on, let's try again. Oh my god, hey. <laughs> now you're being deliberately difficult. I so enjoy filming these segments with you. Oh my god, hey. Hello. In the middle of a very stagey week, we've had a very exciting press package. A press package, package from press, package for press. It's a press package. Uh, this is an Ain't Too Proud tote bag. We love a tote bag. We love the amount of musical theatre tote bags that we have. It's unreal. And we don't use them nearly often enough. No, because it's sometimes what do you use them for? But shopping. We constantly are at the shops for getting tote bags. Yes. So that's exactly what we should use them for, but we don't. But this is no. an Ain't Too Proud tote bag. It's a nice size tote bag. It is really cool. As well. Decent, a decent tote. Uh, so this is, this is all about celebrating the fact that Ain't Too Proud, The Temptations musical, will be opening next year at which venue? The Prince Edward Theatre. Though we are sad to see Mary Poppins closing in the West End, we are very excited for this show to be coming yes. over. We've heard a couple things about plans for the production, which have me really excited. Mm. And it's nice as well because it's one of the larger venues in the West End, which means that we're getting a big Broadway show coming to the West End, which means glitz, glamour, and all that is attributed and to money, that. money, 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 <laughs> money, money, money. And look what was inside the bag. They gave us bubble wrap. I love bubble wrap. Ooh. Excuse me. They're big bubbles. Who said you could pop the first bubble wrap? This is like normal size bubble wrap. You've had a very sheltered life if you think these are big bubbles. Big. I've seen the tiny ones. I've seen bigger bubble wrap in my time. I also, I love that this what is do we nice. Have? It's like Christmas morning. Is the book? It's also nice pr protection of everything. This is how you wrap for an unboxing. I have a nice little, a nice oh, little. Oh, with a QR code. Flyer, with a QR code to stream the Broadway recording. 
clever marketing Very materials. Good. We love that. What have you got there? I believe I have a water bottle. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. It's in packaging. Is that a Chili's bottle? That's the Chili's logo. Is that an actual Chili's bottle? Oh. <gasps> With a handle. Oh gosh, it is, with an ain't too proud embossed of a bottom. But subtle, Look at not that. like garish. Oh, and we have one each as well because I've been sent one home. There you go. Chic, stylish. I'm a big fan of that. That's cool, I love a Chili's bottle. Yeah. Wow. A year down the line, you'll be hearing these at rehearsal venues across the country. And yes. I also have a book about the Temptations, which is good because I know next to nothing about the Temptations. I've been assured that I will know some of the music, which is good, um, and I don't doubt that, but I can, I can read up on them prior to seeing the show next year. So this is all very exciting. It's a Chili's Series 2 bottle. Wow. wow. It, didn't, it didn't focus quickly enough, but it's a Chili's Series 2. Loving all of this stagey swag, and it's made me very excited about Ain't Too Proud, the Temptations musical. Can people yes. book their tickets already? I believe so. I think tickets are already on sale. Go and book your tickets at, whatever, at wherever it is you book tickets. You can head to london.aint2proudmusical.com and tickets are from £25 and it begins in March. There you go. Ooh. There you go. That wasn't, even, that wasn't even sponsored content. We're just excited to tell you about it. There we go. So we're going to enjoy yeah. our Ain't Too Proud, The Temptations musical souvenirs. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel because there are more videos like this coming every weekend. The next Stagey week begins from tomorrow. Hopefully I'm gonna be seeing two shows in London. I'm going to try and get some rush tickets for a two show day. So we will see what happens and you'll have to tune in next week. Thanks for watching. Have a Stagey day. For 10 more seconds. I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey. Thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe!